Hello, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where it is indeed that time of year again for me to share with you what is new in my wardrobe for the season of autumn. Now I would say over the last week, week and a half, the weather has definitely shifted into full autumnal mode. It's got chillier, it's got wetter, the leaves are falling off and it's definitely sweater weather. So that is what I'm going to share with you guys today, some of the new items that I have bought for this season ahead. And to be honest, all of these items will also go through into winter as well. So I'm going to start off because I've broken these down into categories this time. So I'm going to start off with my first category, which is trousers. Now I've got two different styles of trouser here, but two colorways in each. So I'm going to start off with these, which are the Uniqlo Heat Tech trousers, which you guys would more than likely be familiar with because I spoke about these a lot last autumn winter. I actually have a pair on that I bought last autumn winter, the black pair. These are the exact same style, but I bought them in the other two colors that they have. So I now have them in all the colors. The reason for that is because if I buy something and I wear it a lot, and by a lot, I mean pretty much every day, I will buy repeat colorways uh, so that I then have variation because I clearly enjoyed these trousers so much. It's just nice to have some different colors. So here I have got the cream color and then these are like a light, a light gray. Now I haven't worn, I've worn these, the cream ones, but I haven't actually worn the gray ones yet just because the weather has literally just changed over the last couple of weeks. So those are a very firm favorite of mine from last year. And I just wanted more colors. Now the second style, they're also from Uniqlo. I don't actually think these have still got the tags on because I haven't worn them yet. These are not actually heat tech, but these are smart brushed ankle trousers, but they are ankle length. So these ones, the ones I just showed you guys are kind of a little bit tapered toward the bottom, not super skinny. You'll see in the cutaway how they kind of fit, but these ones are more of like a straight leg. So these don't taper in at the bottom, but they are slightly cropped. So potentially these will not carry through into winter when I don't want like a little bit of ankle on show. And these I have bought again in two colors, this color, which is like a gray cream, beige, I suppose the word for that would be. And then I've also got them in a camel, which of course is very classic. So if anyone's looking for some new kind of workwear that's appropriate for the autumn winter seasons, which keeps you a little bit warmer because these are like a nice brushed fabric. So they do feel nice and cozy. I would highly recommend these. I obviously wear them in a slightly more casual way, more often than not with trainers and then with a chunky knit, but of course they're tailored trousers so they can indeed be dressed up to be a little bit more formal or smarter. Right, next up is jewellery, which I don't have on my rail, but I do have some of it on. We'll show you guys in the cutaways. Uh, so I think by now lots of you know that I am a big fan of Monica Vinader, uh, a brand for jewellery, which I think makes up probably now the majority of my jewellery collection. Uh, they have amazing hoops and hoops are something which I am very, very, very passionate about because they're the only kind of earring that I tend to wear just in lots of different variations. Uh, and there's lots of different aspects about Monica Venada as a company, I suppose, and some of their sort of policies that they have as a brand that I really appreciate. For example, they have a five year warranty on all of their pieces. So with every piece that you buy, you get a five year warranty. And if anything happens and you've gone past that five years, so you are outside of your warranty, they have a lifetime repair service, which I think is really great. There's not a lot of brands that really wanna give you that longevity for the products that they're selling you. So you can literally have those items repaired for the entire lifespan of that item. You can also get rings resized. So as we all know, our bodies can change and finger size can fluctuate for whatever reason. So you can have any of your rings resized to make them larger 
or smaller, which I also think is really great. And then all of their packaging has been made from recycled materials, which then in turn is recyclable as well at the end of its life if you didn't want to keep any of your packaging bits and bobs. They use recycled gold, recycled silver, and of course, if you're lucky enough to have any of the diamond products, those diamonds are ethically sourced and certified. What more could you want? As one of several reasons there why I am a big fan of Monica Vinader, along with the thing that kind of draws me in, which of course is the style and the look of their items. So one of the new kind of things that I have started collecting is the stacking rings. And these can be worn either on their own or stacked, as the title would suggest. So they have little sets of stacking rings which I have one of but then you can also kind of mix and match them with other rings you can also add statement rings in there as well if you wanted a slightly chunkier stack I have some slightly more delicate ones and I have four new ones that I've just got and these can be again sort of mixed and matched worn in one big stack or worn separately across various fingers. The only thing that I would say is when you're looking to kind of get a set that you want to go across several fingers, just really think about the sizing because these ones that I have bought primarily to fit this finger, but at the moment they don't fit my middle and I'm not going to put it on this pointy finger, but um, they will go on there. They just fit a little bit snugly. So you kind of just have to get that even mix when you're looking at your stacking rings of the sizes to fit all your fingers. If they're not, that's kind of different. Um, and then as I've already referenced, hoops are a big thing for me. I do have some new hoops. These are the swirl hoops in, I think the medium size. These are just like a slightly different take on a basic hoop. They have again as the name would suggest a slightly swirled shape to them but they're not too chunky but also not super delicate they're kind of like that perfect in between and I just thought they were a little bit different so that's why I went for those and then in my second holes there I can wear something that's like not so statement if you like I can wear something a little bit smaller so I think I've got some siren huggies in there at the moment so that that doesn't kind of take away from uh, the new swirl hoops and as usual when I work with Monica Vinader on these types of collaborations I do have a discount code for you guys the details of which are on screen and will also be down below in the description box as well just for future reference if you want it uh, there is a whole page where there's like a little Emma edit which I'll leave a link to down below in the description box as well along with all the separate pieces but that just kind of gives an overview of all the pieces or actually I don't think all of my pieces are on there but of a lot of the pieces that I have are on that kind of Emma edit page and yeah along with that discount code as well which considering the time of year if you've got gifts to buy potentially that discount code may well come in handy for you or perhaps a loved one that you just want to kind of slip them your dear Santa list. So all of that information down below in the description box. Right, let's move on to the knitwear section of this video. And I'm gonna start off with this cable knit uh, jumper, which is from Arquette. Now this is a wool and mohair blend. There's also some polyamide in there as well for structure, but it is predominantly wool and mohair. So if you have any kind of intolerance to natural fibers like wool and especially mohair, cause I think that can be very triggering for a lot of people, I would avoid this like the plague because it is a little bit itchy, especially if you're not wearing like a base layer. That said, and I can see this holding it up to my natural light that I've got over there, you do need a base layer under this because it is a little bit see-through. So the weave is just very, very open. The knit, should I say, is very, very open, so you can see through it. So you do really need like a nude layer to be worn underneath. And I have a sort of nude color long sleeve t-shirt which is not tight fitting but also not super loose so you don't get any kind of misshaping situations going on when you're wearing the jumper. I have this in a size extra small slash small. I would normally size up in things like this and I would go for the medium large, I think that is a size, but in this, this was already oversized and I'm actually glad that I didn't go up another size. So in this, uh, my size advice would be that you don't need to size up. Right, jumpers number two and three are what I have on 
and another colorway as usual. Now these two jumpers, they are of course the same jumper and these are from Kos. They are the Kos Cashmere Collection. Now for those of you that watched it, was it last year or was it early this year? Last autumn winter season, I made a video on my favorite high street cashmere. So I featured, I think five or six different brands that video was so useful, according to you guys, I'm not making the statement, but lots of you said that, that video was so useful. So I'm also gonna link a link to that video down below in the description box, just for anyone that hasn't seen it, and maybe just wants my take on High Street Cashmere and what I think is the best. And yeah, Kos, if you saw that video, you will know that I was a big fan of Kos Cashmere, and I have had my beady eyes on their website whilst they've been dropping all of their autumn stock, and of course they dropped these. There was zero hesitation. I just have got so much wear out of my Kos Cashmere that I already have, and these are quite a nice, like not a roll neck, but a nice funnel neck. And I like that because I feel like roll necks sometimes sit a bit too tight to your neck. Whereas this, you can, you get a bit of air, if you know what I mean, but you still have that sort of cozy high neck. Um, so I have these in the two colors. It also does come in black, but I have like three funnel neck jumpers in black already. So I said, Emma, enough is enough. You don't need another. So I just got it in this sort of dark chocolatey brown and this gray color. They are a slightly sort of cropped um, style and I don't have a particularly long body, but they don't sort of need tucking in and then blousing. You can just wear them without having to tuck. Right, next jumper is from Autograph at Marks and Spencer. So Autograph is the slightly more premium own brand at Marks and Sparks. And this is a wool cashmere blend. So it's 90% wool, 10% cashmere, which gives it that really nice soft finish or soft feel rather. However, it is also quite thick thanks to that wool blend. So basically cashmere will uh, very much increase in price the thicker it is, it's called apply. And so this is sort of bringing the price down because it's got that wool content in there but still makes it thicker, if that makes sense. Now I have upsized in this to a size 16. For reference, I am a small now, 10, possibly an eight. And yeah, I just like a, an oversized, really kind of slouchy fit. And I didn't find that this in a 10 was particularly oversized. It just didn't have that kind of fit that I wanted. So I upsized by a few sizes. One of the bonuses of Marks and Sparks is that they do have quite a good size range. So if you do want to size up, depending on what size you are, there can be a little bit of wiggle room in that sort of size range. Yeah, it's just, it's really beautiful. I, I highly rate the autograph range at Marks and Spencer. I have a few things from them and I just think that the quality is really good and uh, it's just got some nice pieces in general. Now, next one, I feel like I can't really call this knitwear because it's not actually knitted. It, it feels more like coat fabric. Now, this is a, I don't even know what I would call this because it's not even a jumper. Um, it's a wool top, <laughs> which of course can be worn as outerwear. It's almost like a cropped jacket, but without any fastening because it just pops over your head. And it's got this really interesting, it's almost like, paper origami sort of folded neckline which just drapes nicely at the front and then there's this kind of cutaway detail on there and then goes into a point on the back. It is cropped so again doesn't need tucking in which I quite enjoy. Uh, you can literally just wear it as is. At the moment definitely weather wise it is warm enough to be wearing just something like this and not a thick coat and it is a beautiful chocolatey brown colour, which I just, I'm a fan of in particular at this time of year, because I just think it reflects all of the kind of colours in nature. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of, of brown in any way, shape or form. Right, I'm taking a little break from the rail, even though I've only got one category left, which is like fleece and outerwear. And just because I was talking about autograph at Marks and Sparks, these are also autograph at Marks and Sparks. So I thought I'd quickly just tie these in with the stripy jumper as well. So these are a biker boot, biker boot, a biker boot, as you will see. Uh, I'm trying not to touch the soles as I would normally, because I've worn these a few times already and I've worn them in London a couple of weeks ago for the Disney 100 exhibition. So I, I, I don't think going around London what's on the bottom of these shoes. But they are genuine leather. And what I liked about these was a combination of things. It was the height, 
the comfort once I finally tried them on, and also the hardware color. It's almost like a gunmetal color. And I find on a lot of biker boots, they either go down the gold route, which I think if done well can look nice, but sometimes can look a bit tacky, I suppose might be the word I'd use. But these, I think, look really nice. They're almost not so dark that they tie in so you can still see the hardware, but they're also not sort of blaring in your face. They don't make a lot of noise when they walk, like with various hardware bits, buckles, and the little tube that you get on a buckle. They don't jingle or make a lot of noise, which is also something that I liked. But primarily, it was comfort when I tried these on. These were one of a couple of options of biker boots, which I, I had on my list for this year. I just thought they'd be practical, given that they're leather. Even if we're just walking five minutes up the road to go to the pub and it's like a rainy evening, I thought they would just be a practical option that are comfortable. And given that they've got a chunky sole, they're going to last a decent amount of time as well. Um, so yes, that's those. I'll write sizing information down below in the description box, along with all the links for all these items as well, just to kind of clarify sizing. Right, now again, as the sun is coming out, let's move on to really warm and toasty fleeces. So I've got two fleeces here. This first one was from H&M. I think you may have already seen this in a video, I think maybe where I was sort of decorating the house for autumn, I was wearing this. And fleeces, when you live in the countryside, and I grew up in the countryside, so had many a fleece when I was younger, fleeces are always useful. Dog walking, country walks, even just going to the pub if you don't want to sort of dress a bit nicer, you just want to be in your fleece, being nice and toasty and warm. They are always a good go-to for countryside living. So one can never have too many fleeces, shall we say. So yeah, this one's from H&M. I bought this in store, um, which I don't go in store in H&M too much because I just find that it's a bit overwhelming. There's so much stuff in there. I prefer to browse online. But I did go in there, I think, to do a return. And then I saw this hanging up. And it's actually the, the, like, the young section, divided. Uh, and I don't normally shop in that section. Um, but yeah, I saw this and I thought that is a good dog walking fleece. And I just kind of like the style. It's very sort of similar to the Isabelle Morant one that came out maybe a couple of years ago, which had this black and white kind of pattern on it. This of course is the white and black. It does also come in the reverse colorway. So black fleece with white pattern. But yeah, I love this. And I upsized in this to, this is a size medium. They are quite oversized and this, I kind of wish I'd got a size small uh, because this is quite large, but you can never have too big of a fleece. Now I do have second fleece on here as well. This one is from Arquette. I am a big fan of Arquette fleeces. Even though it's not an official sort of outerwear brand like Patagonia, Columbia, North Face, they do make a good fleece and they often have slightly more of a fashion element to them, which I think sometimes I appreciate. So this one is kind of like a salt and peppery sort of color. You've got the lighter little hints of gray in there and it's a very sort of dark charcoal gray overall. Zip up the main part and then zippy pockets as well. Very handy if you have poo bags and you don't carry a little bag. So I have a little Patagonia sort of bum bag, which I often wear crossbody, but very handy to have zippy pockets if you've got poo bags, because sometimes they will like fall out of normal pockets. So yeah, that's the fleece. It's, there's no bells and whistles on this. It's just an aesthetically nice fleece. And most importantly, it's warm. Right, and now my final item is a jacket slash short coat. Now I massively reduced the amount of coats that I had in my wardrobe during that wardrobe switch over video a few weeks ago. And I, I basically halved, in fact, I think it was more than half, uh, including all the jackets that I also culled from my collection. Um, but this one, <laughs> I promise I'm not starting to recollect them, but this one I did see, I liked and thought I would get a lot of wear out of, and I have already worn this five times since getting it, so that proves that it has already been um, a good shout. Now this I would definitely say is more of an autumn jacket because it is quite thin, despite the fact that it's wool, it is very thin. Now inside, if I can unbutton this, it is fully lined, but I just liked this if you can see here, this nice little shape, once buttoned, I haven't actually worn it buttoned up, I tend to leave it sort of open, but I did like this sort of 
it's almost not got a collar to it but it has still got these lapels so I just thought that was a little bit interesting but it is fully lined it's kind of like this black and white very very tiny check kind of dog tooth but not sort of super defined dog tooth and size wise I can't actually remember what size I got this in let me just check I've got this in a size 40 which is a 12 uh, so I did upsize in this and yeah I think that's probably the perfect kind of fit so if you do want it a little bit bigger especially if you're wearing sort of I tend to upsize in things both because I like the fit and also so that I can fit chunkier knitwear underneath without it being too tight and without my arms like looking like little sausages um so yeah it's a good idea to upsize if you do want to wear chunky knits underneath or if you like that oversized fit right well that is it from me for what's new in my wardrobe for autumn of course i'm sure i'll accumulate a few few more bits i've got some items on my autumn list which maybe i might get around to getting if i find the right items so i will of course share those with you guys as and when i get them but otherwise that's it for me for this week thank you as always for watching and i will see you next time